Earlier this evening, we see one half of the main event, Wayman Carter sports over 14 fights in his professional record alongside Bellator veteran Zach Busha out of Lawrence Fight Club. He will be taking on Johnny Eblen tonight in our main bout of the evening. But coming up next, it is the wrestler Cody Gillenwater taking on Alex Borden. Let's bring out our next bout of the evening, Alex Borden. Coming to us by way of Springfield, Illinois and sporting a 1-0 record in the world of mixed martial arts, it is Team Fusion member Alex Borden. Now he is coming off of a first round arm bar finish and actually trained six years before ever stepping into the cage. That's a whole lot of experience in the gym and to see if he's, he's got to see if it's going to translate over to real life experience. He turned to MMA to find a sense of purpose and uses it as his therapy and says that this is where he needs to be and he's ready tonight. Let's bring out his opponent tonight, Cody Gillenwater. Coming to us by way of shoot a box and making his mixed martial arts debut. It is the college wrestler Cody Gillenwater. Now he has been wrestling for over 28 years. That is a lot of experience on the ground. As we go to our supplement superstores tail of the tape, Cody Gillenwater is going to give up a huge amount of height at only five foot two to Alex Borden's five foot ten. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, fighting out of the blue corner this evening, he stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighs in at 142.4 pounds. Please welcome Alex Borden. His opponent tonight, fighting from across the cage out of the red corner this evening. He stands five feet, two inches tall. He weighs in at 143.4 pounds. Please welcome Cody Gillenwater. Referee Mike England has the call for this contest. Cody Gillenwater in the red tape, Alex Borden in the blue. Now, as we said, Alex Borden will have a definitive height advantage, but how quickly do you see Gillenwater coming out and shooting the takedown? I give it about six seconds. Quick touch of the gloves. Eats a shot, looking for that takedown. And there it is, I, I, dumps it I was over. pretty close. Yes, you were, not bad, Mr. Sella. Now here's the thing is, is, is Borden's got to keep calm. Looks like he's going for a triangle here. This or is actually a double arm bar if he can actually put off, but that's a whole lot of muscle in those arms. Going up, looking for the slam is Gillenwater. He's actually got, he's got his right arm. Nice, but look at this. I think he's got this arm bar. If he I do too. And Borden trying to finish with the arm bar. They're dry, no sweat, but that again, that's a whole lot of muscle in that, that frame he carries. Yes, he's short, but he is stacked with power. Can he get that arm free? Looks like he pulls it away. Alex Borden, if he's changing for the triangle right here, he's, he's let it go. Working that full guard position now, looking for a sweep. What he should do is up kick him right in the face. No other way to put it. <laughs> That's a beautiful call. Plain and simple. And nothing against Gillenwater, but being that short, he doesn't really have a whole lot of distance to cover with that kick. Back to the feet, both of these fighters go. Borden's got to watch out for that shot. Again, looking for the duck under is Gillenwater. Gillenwater needs to watch that head position, trying to work that. Got the wrist control lurking to work that knee. Kind of what you're saying, Jeremy. I see a lot of wrestlers that'll shoot in with their head. They go for a head outside, double or single, whatever it may be. But they just, it, it, just natural reaction, they forget about that guillotine. Yeah, they end up in that guillotine. Big nice. hip toss. And he locks up that triangle again. Now here's 
A little bit better position, but he's he's just taking shots to the face. Nice. Nice, a nice transition, yeah. All he's gotta do is sit up, pull the head back. Heavy pressure right here in front of us. There is a big cut raised here on Alex Borden. What Borden needs to do is throw his hips to the ceiling, push that arm across, and then just do a sit up and pull the head down. He's got great leg position. That leg is deep. He's got to get his arm across. 25 seconds remaining. Big shots, they're coming. Borden still locks that up, he trying to switch it over, lets it go. Shouldn't have let that go. He is just raining down the blood here, ladies and gentlemen. I will say, Gillenwater kind of took a couple heavy breaths right there. Big that, hand from Gillenwater. Nice first round. I think Borden won that on, on just going for finishes, and he had, a, he had a triangle locked up here for about 30 seconds. So how do you see that? He spent most of the time in a submission. So if I was a judge, I'm giving that to Borden because of effectiveness. Yes, Gillenwater got the takedown, but he did absolutely nothing with it. He landed a couple shots, which caused a cut. But over a, an entire round, I consider I consider Borden to be the winner of that round. Spent a lot of time in the submission attempts there. What's interesting, though, is in between rounds, Gillenwater walked over to his corner, put his hands on his knees, and just started breathing kind of heavy. That tells me he's a little bit gassed. He's got a lot of muscle mass, takes a lot of oxygen, a lot of blood's got to get flowing. Cut man Craig Nacello taking care of Alex Borden there in the corner, gets that blood stopped, back into the action for round two. He's always been the second best cut man we have here. <laughs> oh, I remember a day, Mr. Sella, yes, that uh, I worked your corner. Such good times. Back into the action here, Alex Borden pushing forward. I'll nice leg kick there though, out of Gillenwater. Yeah, if I was Gillenwater, I would throw an easy jab with a hard overhand and, and just get in on that takedown. Clearly that's where he wants to be. Almost jumping guard here is Borden. He's trying for almost, <laughs> almost trying to jump up into a triangle. We have seen that before. It's a tough position, especially, now this is where the height, other than he's looking for this guillotine again, the yeah. height of, of Gillenwater could work because he could keep that head underneath the chin and work that position. Yeah, you drive that head up into that chin, that makes it just very, very uncomfortable. Came across just there with a, an overhand, which almost turned into a forearm a little bit. Nice right hand by Borden there. If I was Borden, I'd start throwing some knees to the body, try to suck the life out of, out of Gillenwater. Gillenwater. Gillenwater now looking for that guillotine. That's a whole lot of muscle. He needs to get that right elbow up and really put that pressure on uh, and, and then lift that head down. How hard is it to finish a standing guillotine like this? Uh, for me, it is not hard. I am 6'2". I am literally a foot taller than Gillenwater. <laughs> so the height does have a lot to do with it. It, it sure does. Uh, but with the proper technique, anything is, is, is easy. Let's it go, eat some punches. Again, Borden looking here to potentially just jump into guard. Yeah, but Borden's losing his round by, by trying that, that nonsense. He needs to throw some knees to the body, start taking that life away from him. Jeremy Johnson, along with my partner tonight, UFC veteran Adam Sella, down to 55 seconds left here in the second round. Trying for that uh, that front oh, headlock position. Uppercut. Nice uppercut. I like how he baited him with that front snap down, that front headlock snap down. And as soon as he popped his head up, hey, here's a right hand, buddy. A lot of pressure here coming out of Gillenwater. Cody many, Gillenwater in the red. Adam, or I'm sorry, Alex Borden in the blue. I'm going to give Craig the cut man some, some compliments here. That cut has not opened back up. 
It was pouring out. Yes, it was. That uppercut has a home for Gillenwater. Rolling to his back is Borden. Again, looking for those submissions. Hey, they're there. He's taking them. Borden has been very active off of his back in this round. Yeah, that was a uh, a game plan, I guess, he has after that first round, trying to just jump guard and throw up submission after submission. I figure throw 100 darts at a dartboard, one of them's got to stick. So what do you see it so far in this fight? I would say it is two rounds to one, to none. Borden is 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 getting the best of Gillen Water right now. So if, adversely, there if you're in the corner here, as we see Cody Gillen Water, what advice are you giving him as we look at the Mattingly Lumber instant replay? I'm telling him to go out there and throw those hands. You know, I, obviously he's an established wrestler and he's got a, a grappling background, but he needs to go out there and do something a little bit different. Clearly, Borden is trying to get this fight on the ground. Don't give that to him. Use your power. You're, you're a small, compact guy with a lot of power. Go out there with some overhands, you know. Just throw caution to the wind. Just try to knock his block off. Touch of the gloves, third and final round. Again, going for that jumping of guard is Alex Borden. See, there's those knees I was talking about. Takes the wind right out of the sails there of you to get hit in that looking again, jumping guard. But now they're both very sweaty and they're gonna start to slip. Yeah, and what Gillenwater can do is next time he does that, this is kind of what I call a jerk move. Okay. <laughs> Rake him down that fence. That is not fun to feel. And then you're going to end up in a great position because then you got his back against the cage. And then you can posture up, start throwing some hammers down. Gillenwater with the takedown ends up in full guard. But I think this is where Borden wants it. Working that body triangle is Borden now. Gillenwater trying to lock him up against the cage here. Kind of grind, as you said, grind that head position. Yeah, but he's going to need to do something. In my opinion, he needs to finish this fight. One thing I like right here is grabbing that head, digging your forearms into their chest, and going for that can opener just to break that guard. Yeah, they are right in front of us here. And it, it, it's a tough position to be in for Borden. He's got to do something with that guard now. He's been very active in it the entire time. And this is what I mean by having his back against the cage and you're putting that pressure on him. It eliminates him from throwing up a lot of submissions. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it just it, de it definitely minimi minimalizes it. Minimizes. A lot of top pressure here now in this third and final round coming out of Cody Gillenwater using that wrestling base to keep Borden on the cage. Again, the blood starting to flow now. Gillenwater needs to follow those hips. Both of these fighters now are and there's, cut. There's the arm. The problem is he's very sweaty, very slippery. Gillenwater here trying to push it. Both of these guys, like I said, are starting to bleed. Adam and I basically had to move away from the booth. <laughs> yeah, I, I, know, I don't want that on me. I got my nice suit on. Again, Gillenwater here on the top position. Yeah, I believe Gillenwater is actually winning this round, but I, I think he needed a finish, although the other two rounds were pretty close depending on how you score it. 10 seconds remaining here in the third and final round. Dylan Water gonna finish on top. Great fight by both these guys. I was uh, I was thoroughly entertained, and it wasn't really a sloppy fight. It was pretty technical. Yeah, a very technical fight out of Cody Dylan Water using that wrestling. Alex Borden had some great jujitsu in this fight. Yeah, he sure did. He sure did. And the thing to nullify a good wrestler is either a really good takedown defense or having a very active submission game, and that's exactly what Borden had. As we look at our Mattingly Lumber instant replay here, we see the heavy top pressure coming out of Cody Gillenwater, but was it enough to take the win? 
in this contest. We will find that out here in just a moment. For as much blood that has been thrown around in this fight, our cutmen have done a great job on these guys tonight. Absolutely, absolutely. Shamrock brings in the best of the best for that. I know from experience. While we're waiting here on the decision, Again, we still have our main event tonight, which will feature Johnny Eblen taking on Wayman Carter. Beautiful fights, but let's send it up to the cage to Stephen Bayer to find out how this one goes. Kansas City, I think you would agree. This is what Shamrock FC is all about. That was a great fight. Let's give both of these fighters a big round of applause. Going to the scorecards tonight, Judge A scores the bout 30 to 27, Judge B scores the bout 30 to 27, and Judge C scores the bout 29 to 28. Your winner by unanimous decision out of the red corner this evening, Cody! Water. Very interesting. So I would say that the judges saw the takedowns as more than the submission attempts. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's not an uncommon thing. It just depends. It, it's, it's, it's up to your opinion of what you think is more effective. You're controlling the position. You put them there. They happen to be making the best of a bad situation. But if the, if the judge sees it as the takedown is the effective part, because you picked them up and you put them there and then the submission did not work. Right. And they did not finish the fight, but you still threatened with them. So it's really, it's really up to the judge. Perfect, guys. We still have more action to come. Is coming up next. It is Derek Wicks taking on Roland Harris. <laughs> 